there are no animals in this country that are being abused more severely than those in, involved in dog fighting operations. There's something especially loathsome about torturing helpless creatures for fun and profit. And evidence of torture is what investigators found on July 8th when federal and local authorities working in teams across eight states staged the largest raid in history against the underground dog fighting racket. We ended up rescuing over 407 animals uh, just in Missouri and Illinois. And we, we have these dogs housed in a warehouse in St. Louis. It is a secret facility because dog fighters are very dangerous people. Um, and we, we have some serious concerns for the safety of our staff and the volunteers that are here, um, and also for the dogs. Many of these dogs are worth thousands of dollars. Say what you might about pit bulls, no dogs deserve to be pulled behind cars to build their stamina, to have their necks burdened and scarred by heavy collars and logging chains, to be sent into battles in which they lose eyes, lips, and limbs, to be hanged, drowned, electrocuted, or shot for losing. Every Saturday night or Friday night, people close to you are fighting dogs. They're, they're making these dogs go into a small box, and they're making them fight until one dog is either dead or can no longer pick itself up. But the raid also revealed a brutal paradox. Large-scale crackdowns like this one are rare precisely because the dog fighting business mistreats so many dogs. Busting a breeder means taking custody of the dogs, yet no police department or sheriff's office has the resources to kennel, treat, and attempt to rehabilitate dozens or even hundreds of abused animals. This raid could not have happened without the extraordinary cooperation of the Humane Society of Missouri and its team led by Tim Rickey. The goal with rescuing these dogs from, from this um, barbaric form of animal cruelty really was to, to get the animals rehomed uh, into to loving homes. Their population soon swelled past 500 as pregnant females delivered more than 100 puppies. We have a, a tremendous number of puppies uh, that have never been exposed to dog fighting. Some of those have uh, obviously have dog fighting bloodlines, um, but they have not been trained, they've not been exposed to other animals, and those those puppies will make uh, great dogs for people. And, and you know, they're, they're extremely affectionate, very high energy. When the animals were seized, the Humane Society anticipated that most of them would have to be put down because of their injuries or their temperament. In fact, more than half of the adult dogs and nearly all of the puppies are still alive nearly five months later, some 300 animals in all. If any animal ever deserved a loving home, these dogs deserve it. They have been through torture. They were bred into a, a torturous life. The rehabilitation of even one fighting dog is a long and uncertain project. Socialization can require months of effort. And even if the process proves a success, the old gladiator may never be entirely tamed. Experts say it's unwise to place a former fighting dog in a home with other pets or crawling children. I've been in this industry for 20 years rescuing animals from puppy mills and animal hoarders and any type of abusive situation you can imagine, but never have I seen a more loyal and friendly group of dogs than what we've taken from these dog fighters. Of course, through all this passionate effort, the animal shelters of Missouri and elsewhere continued to receive the usual sad supply of abandoned, neglected, and lost pets, most of them doomed to the needle. Does it make sense, some people wonder, to go to heroic lengths to save potentially violent dogs while harmless strays die scarcely noticed? 
For that matter, how high a priority is the shortage of homes for fighting dogs in a country where options are too often scarce for the human children of abusive parents? Hard questions. But the answers should not be clouded by misplaced blame. This industry needs to be shut down. The American public needs to know how prevalent it is, and we need to stand up and say enough's enough.